Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Women's Minister lashes out at opposition MP for false claims. Ministers to discuss Malolo Island investigation report. An FRA inundated with roadwork requests. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama has strongly stated that he will not spare those who continue to spread misinformation. Targeting the opposition members, Mbaini Marama says he stands ready to take head on those who are fond of spreading lies and deceit. Mbaini Marama says Fijians cannot afford to be lied to by the very people they voted to speak for them in Parliament. Ali Kimbia reports. Speaking in Parliament today, Wurenge Mbaini Marama put some opposition members under the spotlight for continuously misleading people. But you don't stop being MPs when you leave this chamber. Your behavior on social media, around the broke bowls, should reflect that. Honorable Bultaru, <laughs> I'm also looking at you. And lies on your videos. This behavior is despicable. Baini Marama says misinforming Fijians is unpatriotic and he will find avenues to present facts to the public. Pledge to present the Fijian people with facts. You'll see me doing it here, Mr. Speaker, and you'll see me doing it on videos I post to my Facebook page and through my Nanda, Nanda Prime Minister program on Radio Fiji One. Yeah. The Prime Minister is like a crybaby. There was mixed emotion from the opposition side while replying to these comments by Baini Marama with NFP leader Professor Biman Prasad admitting to the misinformation being spread by some opposition members. Yes, we have misinformation and lies at times, but it also comes from the other side as well. Uh, and, I hope, and I hope that the Prime Minister, Prime Minister will take into account uh, when he next talks about that as well. The Prime Minister says the people of Fiji deserve to know the truth and details about the running of the government. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Women's Minister Mary Saini Vuniwanga has slammed the comments made by opposition MP Ro Felipe Tuisawao, who blamed the current leadership for the rapid increase in rape and sexual assault against women and children. While responding to questions on the National Gender Policy Program, Vuniwanga says it is so uncalled for Ro Tuisawao to blame the government for such hideous actions. Ali Kimbia with this report again. Setting the record straight in Parliament, Vuniwanga blasted Rotu Isawau for making baseless comments on the issue of rape and sexual assault. Under their leadership, let us totally deteriorate in the last five or ten years. The number of uh, rape, sexual assaults, especially assaults on children. The rape of women, the sexual violence on our children, is not because of leadership. It's because of us. It's because of the breakdown of the family unit. It's because of the decay in moral values. And that's where we are to look. Vuniwanga says government implements program to try and prevent this issue and believes the onus is on families to talk about rape and sexual assault openly at home. The government has come up with a lot of laws and policies that encourage, that have encouraged people to report about this topic that we hardly talk about, that we treat as a taboo. It's not a taboo. We need to talk about it every chance we get. Wuniwanga says the hike in cases of sexual violence in the country is a fact and families must discuss ways to prevent this crime. Ali Kimbia, FBC News.
The Lands and Environment Ministry will meet tomorrow to decide on their next course of action against Free Soul Development Limited, who are working on a resort project in the Mamanuda Group. The two ministries will discuss the findings of their respective investigations conducted on the island last week. Akusita Thale reports, despite the Lands Ministry confirming no approval or license was granted for the project, the developer maintains foreshore lease was issued. The two ministries investigating the alleged breach of conditions into the proposed hotel development on Malolo Island will now meet to compare their findings. Anything that is uh, a foreshore, on the foreshore, anything that's outside dry land, beaches, <coughs> mangroves, uh, seabed, it all belongs to the state, it belongs to the people. So we are the custodians, the Ministry for Lands is the custodian for uh, the property of the people, that is the property of the state. So if somebody goes on developing uh, land without our permission, without our consent, there is obviously a uh, consent for us. Once a full report is gathered, the minister says their next step is to meet with the developer. If they're developing on the state land, state property, without um, having, uh, having uh, express uh, orders that uh, they should not go further, they done that, they know that they've done, they done something wrong. Meanwhile, FBC News has received confirmation that developer Dixon Pang is back in the country and will meet the landowners this evening. Malolo landowners representative Amani Sorokoverata has also confirmed that they will meet Pang in Lotoka tomorrow to gather all the documents and decide on the next step. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Akusita Tale has been closely following the story and joins us live now. Akusita, what are the new developments as of this afternoon? Despite a stop order notice issued to the Free Soul Real Estate Development Limited for the construction of the resort, the developer is adamant that his project, that his multi million dollar project, is worthwhile and has continuously released statements about the project. Now, this project is estimated to cost over a billion Fijian dollars. The developer also claims that even before the foreshore lease was issued by the Director of Lands, they had assisted landowners and fishing rights owners over 1.5 million Fijian dollars in projects projects and employment opportunities for locals. Now, Jackie, as of this evening, uh, the, the Minister for Lands, Mr. Ashnil Sudakar, has come out to confirm that no foreshore lease was issued by the Director of Lands. Prioritizing maintenance of infrastructure is dependent on the resources available. Minister responsible Chonio Sumate highlighted this in Parliament today, explaining that there are a number of projects in place with the Fiji Roads Authority to ensure that roads, wharfs and jetties get the attention they need. Maggie Boyle reports. Every village, every unit is always asking for road humps, my road hump, my road hump, my road hump. Infrastructure is a hot topic. The minister telling the House that in 2017, 9,000 service requests were recorded. By the end of 2018, they had been able to reduce that down to 6,100. So there's about 30% of the, of the service requests had been addressed. At the end of January 2019, there were only 4,400 service requests that were still open. While there has been some progress with roadwork and repairs, for some, more should have been done. All we hear are excuses. All we hear are excuses. We do not have endless buckets of money in government. We do not have endless buckets of uh, money. I've been in, uh, informed by uh, people of Novalabu that the uh, FRA is using sand to fill in the potholes. One of the challenges that we face in the outer islands that you often have don't have the quality of raw material in that island to address the needs. Osimate was responding to an oral question posed on government's plans to provide timely attention to complaints of poor infrastructure. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Lands Minister believes the exchange of land between Fiji and India to construct embassies is a win-win situation for both countries. A number of people have signed petitions without seeking any clarification and have also spread rumours that the proposed Indian embassy will be constructed at the Botanical Garden. However, the local government and the Land Ministry have clarified that the proposed embassy will be built away from the actual gardens. Pranita Prakash reports. Lands Minister Ashtil Sudhakar says the land where the proposed Indian embassy will be built has been lying idle for so many years. It's never been used and nobody's been occupying that, nobody's been using this for a hundred years and suddenly um, you hear that a lot of noise about people uh, opposing uh, building an embassy there. The fact is it was not used, it's not, it's not essentially the botanical garden, it's a car park area. 
Sudhakar also clarified the deal between Fiji and India. Sometimes back, the Indian government gave us a space, uh, a prime land area in New Delhi to build our embassy, and it's worth close to 100 million Fijian dollars. So th this lot is in exchange for that. Uh, it's a nice gesture on a, on a foreign policy matter that, uh, that, they, that we give them a space to build here as well. Meanwhile, the proposed rezoning of Lot 2 Botanical Garden in Suva is still in objection phase. A collective decision will be made, and once they've received all the objections and requirements, all of them set by the law. So we're not there yet. The objection period ends on the 25th of this month. The petition that is being signed by those opposing the proposed project is called All of Us Save Suva's Botanical Gardens. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Still to come, household inspections carried out to prevent leptospirosis spread. An alleged murderer fronts court. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in Nakas on the Wagarong and Bula Fib, Nambando and Asir. Oya was it says a Lombasa. An 18-year-old man from Singatoka who is alleged to have murdered a 57-year-old man appeared at the Lautoka Magistrates Court today. The alleged incident happened last Friday in Malala, Lautoka, in the victim's house. Avnil Dilesh Mani of Lomawai is charged with one count of murder, three counts of theft, one count of burglary, and one count of driving a motor vehicle without a license. Mani's lawyer applied for bail, stating that his client is willing to abide by strict conditions. However, police prosecutor Paul Taito objected to this, stating the alleged offences are serious. Money has been further remanded. He will reappear on the 26th of this month at the Lautoka High Court. Defence counsel for Yvette Nikolic, who is charged with drug-related offences, maintains that she was not aware of the items on board their yacht shenanigans. Day seven into the trial for the Australian couple and the court heard that Yvette was not part of any transactions made by her husband, John Nikolic. Rachel Nuth reports. State witness detective acting corporal Athene Prasad told the court that John's wife Yvette was not involved in the wire transfer of more than $38,000 while they were on board the shenanigans. Prasad also explained the bags containing the items found on board were sealed in front of John and transported from Namaka Nandi to Tatonga Police Station in Suva. The bag contained 10 bars of cocaine, 65 ecstasy tablets, two plastic containers and a flask. The two are jointly charged with two counts each of importing an illicit drug with two alternative counts of possessing an illicit drug. They are also charged with a count each of possessing arms and ammunition without holding an arms license. The couple was arrested after authorities seized 13 bricks of cocaine weighing 15 kilograms as well as ecstasy tablets with an estimated value of $30 million from the yacht. The trial continues tomorrow. Rachel Na, FBC News. A task force from the Health Ministry, including environment officers, have been carrying out household inspections to prevent the spread of leptospirosis. Opposition Whip Linda Tamboya questioned the Health Minister in relation to the response time for typhoid and leptospirosis in Parliament this morning. Dr. Firemi Wangai Nambete clarified that same action was taken for both outbreaks. The Ministry had declared leptospirosis outbreak in the Central Division last month after recording over 60 cases and four deaths. The typhoid outbreak was declared in Naitha Siri and Navosa in September last year. Typhoid was predominantly in the rural areas. Our um, leptospirosis outbreak was predominantly in the peri-urban areas. The attention to detail was saved. 
Tarifanes Kavao is a new multi-purpose vessel that Fiji has acquired from China that will assist the Navy in carrying out hydrographic surveying. Effectively, the survey will assist with navigation, assessing the safety of our waters as well as its economic viability. Defense Minister Nieser Ratu says with Fiji's exclusive economic zone measured at around 1,290,000 square meters, there's still a massive area that's unknown. Depth lands than uh, 200 meters, 63 percent of Fiji's water has been adequately surveyed. 30 percent requires resurvey, and 7 percent have never been systematically surveyed. The Agriculture Ministry is closely monitoring all expenditure programs undertaken to help rural farmers. Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says they also keep track of the impact of the initiative. Dr. Reddy says they are now profiling all the assistance to avoid possible scams. For example, a crop farmer, what was the area on the crop, what was the output then that particular time before the assistance was given? And we want to see what is the output now and what is the area on the crop now. Same thing applies to livestock. What was the head of, head, number of livestock before? What is the number of livestock now? And what is the farmer household income? Coming up in sports later with Jamie, former Manchester United players, to be the chief guest at the VGFA Awards next month. But first, Rachel is here now with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Refurbished outlet creates 40 new jobs. And in growing Fiji, work on Blackrock Camp to begin soon. Stay with us. Viola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coroco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote, I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigai, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, around 40 new jobs have been created following the opening of the newly renovated Jacks of Fiji outlet in Lotoka. Jacks Group of Companies Chief Executive Bavin Katri says around $3 million has been spent on the refurbishment. Katri says the shop initially opened in 2005 and the facelift was carried out to meet the customer demand. There are cruise ships in Lotoka, so uh, uh, it is the uh, important uh, market for us, and uh, we will service uh, that through our store here in uh, Lotoka. More than eighty-three thousand dollars has been assisted through the micro and small business grant. This was directly impacted the lives of one hundred and ninety-three thousand people since its inception eleven years ago. Industry and Trade Minister Pramila Kumar highlighted the initiatives undertaken to develop the grassroots communities and younger entrepreneurs. The MSBG has impacted the lives of up to 193,180 Fijians. The assistance has been far-reaching to the smallest of businesses that have been recognized to have the capability to make a difference. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. The U.S. dollar is benefiting from the investor nervousness around the trade talks holding close to its 2019 high today. Beyond its safe haven appeal, the U.S. dollar is still the highest yielding currency in the developed world. With all major central banks turning dovish, the greenback seems relatively attractive. Meanwhile, the British Parliament is set to hold a debate on Brexit on February 14. Prime Minister Theresa May is seeking changes to her deal with Brussels after it was rejected by a record majority in Parliament last month. Closer to home, the index of Australian business conditions showed a welcome bounce in January. This was after an alarmingly sharp drop in December, though the survey still pointed to cooling growth ahead. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Inaka.
Thanks, Anifa. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. A mixed day again for the Fijian dollar as our dollar gained against the Aussie dollar as well as the euro and the Japanese yen. Taking a look at the commodities market, oil prices gained today and ended the day at 52.54 a barrel. Gold was down to close at 1,306 per ounce and silver was down as well to close at 15.68 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, construction work on the Black Rock training facility for peacekeepers in Nandi is expected to begin in the next two months. The region facility is funded through the Fiji Australia Defence Corporation program focusing on peacekeeping and police training, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief as well as maritime security. This has been confirmed by Defence Minister Inia Seiraratu, adding that his ministry is now looking at the overall design of the Black Rock project. Seiraratu has acknowledged the Australian government for selecting a local engineering company, GHD Engineers, to design the project, of which 50% is ready and will be presented next month. So that we commence with the construction in 2019 April and uh, allow the engineers and the technical team to continue uh, with the rest of the scoping and the, the technical work for the completion of the entire project. Work is expected to be completed around December next year. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie joins you now with all the very latest in sports. Thanks and good evening in sports tonight. Lautoko approached second OCL match with caution. And major unions set their sights on Skipper Cup. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. Singatoka, Mitch Shepherd is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Single Line. Mitch FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nursery. I love listening to Mitch FM here in Nursery. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM, it's hot. Well, Latoka football knows it has enough firepower in its arsenal. It is approaching its second OFC Champions League match with some caution. The Blues take on Henderson Eels tomorrow, and a win would book them a place in the quarterfinals. Arsenal Prasad reports. Despite beating Morombe Wewens 5-0 in its opening match, the Latoka football side is wary of its next opponent in the Champions League. I won't say that we are confident, but uh, just have to keep a low profile and uh, just go out there and just work hard for it. Uh, not, nothing comes easy. They'll want to win as well. Star striker Benjamin Totori believes his side need to be aggressive if they are to beat Solomon's Anderson Hills. We, we, we need to be more ruthless in front of goal. We, we, we need to score, you know, we need to score, you know, what it, like those, the, those big games, you know, you, you have a chance, you need to score. For captain Benamino Matenengara, teamwork will play a key role. You have to go out there because it's the heat as well. Eh? It's a main factor, so just need to work together. So get your things right and maybe you get three points uh, at the end of the day. With five points in bag, another win could see Lautoka qualify for the eliminations. If we win the second game, we're, we're true to the quarterfinal. But uh, respect the other team as well, you know. This football, you know, it's not easy. We the Blues will face the Anderson Eels at 4 p.m. at Lotoka's Chechel Park tomorrow. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Former France football defender Mikael Sylvester will grace the Fiji Football Association's awards night as chief guest next month. President Rajesh Patel says after a few weeks of negotiations, they were able to persuade the high-profile former footballer to attend the function. The 41-year-old played for Manchester United from 1998 to 2008 and also featured for Arsenal from 2008 to 2010. 
The PGFA Awards Night will be held on March 2nd in Nandi. We are very happy with the Legends program at, at FIFA and everyone. And, uh, you know, it was total correspondence going back and forth. Uh, we had uh, asked for a lot of other legends, but they were committed and everything. And uh, so this is the first one we're getting, and Mikhail Sylvester will be the first one. And next year we're looking forward for some other legends to come through, and uh, we will keep on trying our best. Former Fiji Sevens manager Ise Rayawa has passed away. It's believed the 53-year-old was ill and had recently traveled to India for treatment. In his time with Fiji Rugby Union, Rayawa also managed the Fiji Warriors, Suva and Madhuwata provincial teams. He was the manager of the Fiji 7 side in 2013 and 2014. Funeral details are yet to be finalized. Fiji Airways Flying Fijians coach John McKee is closely monitoring the performance of a few players in New Zealand who could be added to his extended squad for June test matches. While McKee has not revealed any names, he says he will be meeting players to discuss their possible future with the Fiji 15's team soon. Meanwhile, Europe-based Flying Fijians will march into camp specifically organized for them in France next month. In New Zealand, particularly, some players you know come through the the Mitre 10 Cup who, who, are, who are on the radar, and and we're and we're looking at and you know just sort of breaking it into into Super Rugby, and I'll be I'll be going down to New Zealand at some stage to, to talk to those players. Less than two months away, the Super Rugby Union is hoping for a good start to the Skipper Cup competition. Captain Penny Rain Ray says last year's win has been shelved as they set new targets this season. Koroi Tandulala reports. The Skipper Cup title holders have been going an extra mile during the off-season to maintain their fitness level. For us, the main effort now is to um, start well. Um, boys have been doing their own training for season And um, before the management only out, uh, the program went to start. And obviously, we just want to start well on the first round of the competition before we look ahead during the competition. Uh, continues. Meanwhile, Nandronga Rugby President Tiko Matawalu says they needed to overcome a lot of challenges to reclaim the lost glory. In terms of uh, trying to bring back lost glory that uh, we need to bring back for this year, uh, there's a lot of challenge for our coaches, a lot of challenge for our players. Uh, we need to uh, step up to the challenge and um, finish off the season in, uh, on a high note. Skipper Cup will be held in April, but the fixtures is yet to be decided. Kori Tandulala, FBC Sports. The Ministry of Youth and Sports is currently conducting a consultation for safety in sports participation policy to safeguard the welfare of athletes. Minister Pravin Kumar says they are concerned with the future of sports persons and while they're working on formulating an anti-doping policy, they're also looking at life after sports for Fijian athletes. Who wants to know is life after sports. This is another aspect, Honorable Speaker, that we are working on it. And as I have said, that it has to be only Fiji first to come up with this type of policies yeah, and legislation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is exactly what we're going to do, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Fiji's most uh, decorated boxer, Sakaraeve, rather, has told FBC Sports the condition of the bout last weekend at Prince Charles Park in Nandi brings shame to the sport. Once known as Fiji's boxing golden boy, Ve is calling on officials to get their acts together. Ve says the organizers should have been better prepared as it is unfair they had to call off the main bout that people paid money to watch. A lot of people, including myself, we want to know why the main bout was called off. This is not fair to those who have paid money for the boxing match last weekend. People turn up mainly to watch the main event, and this is not good at all. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and the new media. A study shows uh, the reliance on social media could make it harder to keep and make friends. Details on that paradox coming up. My Navneet Nan, Nambualumbua se, jese Prani North mashur hai, waise Radio Fiji 2 bhi sabhi jaga mashur hai. Radio Fiji 2, desh ki dharkan. Seema Nakasi se, I Radio Fiji 2 pasan karti hu sunne ke liye. Radio Fiji 2, desh ki dharkan. I am Uncle King, singer to the town ke, taxi driver, daise rugby fame se, waise Radio Fiji 2 fame se. Radio Fiji 2, desh ki dharkan.
The new media, don't be fooled by how many friends you have on social media. It may hinder your ability to meet people in real life. It's Weather Time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. It's been a marvelous day with so much sunshine throughout the country. Hope you loved what the weather had to offer today. Taking a look in the west, quite mild, the sun was blistering hot, hope you had your hats on while taking that boat ride. Eastwards from Pakhabar Suva, quite humid with very bright sunny spells, light showers expected later tonight that will definitely cool off the heat. And up north, quite uncomfortable as the sun was really warm, I can imagine all the sweat in, hope you're all keeping hydrated. At sea, Eastwards wind 10 to 15 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.05 a.m. with low tide at 6.10 a.m. Sunrise at 5.59. For tomorrow, another semi-sunny day expected. However, heavy showers are lined up for the eastern areas of Fiji. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest out of all the centers. And looking further on to Wednesday, showers are ch taking charge from here. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, what should be done to minibus operators who increase fares illegally? I think it's like quite unfair because there's a certain, uh, it's not yet formalized or anything yet. And the way they're doing it again to us, public users doing it, it's quite unfair and it should be charged accordingly. Minibus uh, operator, they should liaise with, directly with the LTA and come to a conclusion whether to increase or not to increase. That's the best option which I have. I would think they should be fined because most of the general public mm. are traveling in many mini, minivans and I think they should be charged for charging them more. I think these drivers should be charged and have their license suspended. Actually, they shouldn't be charged, but the government should negotiate with the owners of the minibus. Eh? Recapping the main stories for tonight, women's minister lashes out at opposition MP for false claims. Ministers to discuss Malolo Island investigation report and FRA inundated with roadwork requests. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, is drugs becoming a major social problem for Fiji? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day sent in by Api Tuitumbo. The picture was taken in Flagstaff, one of the fast-growing shopping hubs for the people of Suba. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in the cash on the wrong Nambula Fib, Nambondo and a serre. Oya was it says a lambasa, and the teletain of a wrong Nambula Fem, Nambado and Serre. We have the Tumeli, Aquana Town, no Hinatoka, Teletakin and a wrong Nambula Fem, Nambando and a serre. Never go fun in a town and go sing a toka, get on the Teletakanambula Fem, Nambando and a serre. Bula Fem, Nambado and a serre.